man says while walking home with his groceries, he had a run in with the serial killer. Hear why he says he got away unscathed. A car driving down I-75 in Saginaw County this morning ends up like this. We'll tell you how the people inside are tonight and the message rescue workers want you to learn from it. Senior belongings destroyed by a house fire is tough enough, but for Ann Hayes, it's not just about losing things. This fire took away her independence. This house is equipped with everything she needs to get around, such as this elevator. The crazy thing about this storm is the wind. It has blown the snow all over the place. In some places, leaving it inches deep. You can see the grass right here. In other places, leaving it feet deep. This is the door where police say the men fell out of. As you can see, it's in an area separate from where the driver is. Police say at first the driver didn't even know the men fell out. If you have a smartphone, you know you come to rely on these machines. They bring you email, internet, GPS, and oh yeah, the good old ability to talk on the phone. But one wrong touch of the screen and you could leave your phone vulnerable to viruses. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Kim Russell. We're following developing news as we learn new information tonight about the Amber Alert out for three missing Michigan boys. Thanks, Randy. What a mess out there. Good morning, Detroit. I'm Kim Russell in for Mike Brookbank. Topping your free press headlines this Friday, December 10th. It is not a done deal just yet. Detroit Mayor Dave Bing wants to make that clear to residents angry after a report yesterday on his plan to consolidate the city. It involved cutting services to residents who refused to move. He just kept saying that, you know, I feel like I'm next. I feel like I'm next. 43 year old Darwin Marshall told friends he saw a disturbing pattern, a pattern police would notice after his death. He said a madman must have stabbed several of his innocent friends out of nowhere. Well, he was talking to me about, you know, he feel like because all these people was getting stabbed, be like five people I knew within the last month got killed. He lived near them and often walked alone. He feared he would be next. He collapsed over here. Neighbors found Marshall here in front of his apartment building on Garland in Flint around 1.30 in the morning, July 26. His eerie premonition had come true. Where his family came and got the blood and stuff that was up, and it was blood all on the doorpost or whatever. And just like Darwin Marshall, who had no sense of security in the days before he died because of this serial stabber, his neighbors are left now with no sense of security themselves. Every time they walk past the place where he died, they are reminded his killer is still on the run. Oh, I don't know if he was helping the man, because he's nice. He's a nice guy, so he probably was, and the man just, you know, started. Knowing a gentle but strong 43-year-old man could be killed makes this neighbor especially nervous. She carries binoculars with her so she can keep an eye on anyone suspicious. Her only comfort comes from knowing Darwin Marshall found God as he prepared in case the serial killer he suspected would find him ever did. Started seeing his kids more. He said, uh, you know, he was reading, starting reading back his Bible, you know. He wasn't doing the same, you know, trying to get his life in order. We begin tonight with an exclusive look at an all but forgotten victim of violence in Argentine Township, eight-year-old Tyler Baker. His brother, four-year-old Dominic Calhoun, died two weeks ago. His mom, 25-year-old Kareem Baker, is expected to be arraigned on second-degree murder charges tomorrow. Her 24-year-old boyfriend, Brandon Hayes, is charged with first-degree murder. Tonight, Tyler's family wants him home from foster care. If I could have done anything different, I would have. The last thing I wanted was for my little boy to die. Kareem Baker told me she needed to tell her story on the day after her son's death in desperation. My whole family hates me, everybody hates me, and I feel so alone. She said her family would not answer her phone calls and she wanted them to see her face, see her injuries, and know she had tried to save her four-year-old son Dominic from her boyfriend, 24-year-old Brandon Hayes. Every time I tried to protect Dominic, he'd rip me off and go back after him and I would just crawl back over to him and try to protect him as best as I could. I'd give her the best actress award. Kareem Baker's sister Christine and her parents did not buy it, and then they heard this vow Corrine made to her surviving son Tyler. Mommy loves you, and I will get you back. She will not get that child. I won't allow it. I never want her to see her other baby again. We'll go through all the necessary steps to be to illegally adopt him, because. His name is Baker. That way. That's not even close to being done. This was 16-year-old Christine Baker's room at the family's Tyrone Township home, but she moved her stuff into her other sister's room so Tyler can have his own room. The family has filled it with new clothes and toys, much donated by the community. For Tyler. It's, it's amazing. However, the family doesn't know for certain when or whether he will move in. 
Right now, Tyler is in foster care. I need him probably just as much as he needs me. I lost one. I can't lose another. I won't make it. This will not be the family's first custody battle. They say they tried to take in Tyler and Dominic before this tragedy because their daughter is an unreliable mother. She just up and disappears. For months. Came back here all cracked out on something and tried to grab the boys. I said, you can't have them. And she shows up the next day with the sheriff. So we filed the papers and, and went to court. She got them back, of course. Drugs controlled her life. Brandon was more important to her than those boys. I took care of him while she did her drugs and her selling and did this. And when got wasted, I did it all. Me, not her. I want my baby back. Now Kareem Baker is in jail, charged like her own family says she should be for not prioritizing those boys. And this family still grieving the violent death of innocent Dominic is hoping soon they can give Tyler what they say Kareem could not, a loving, stable home. Tyler Martin Baker, if you see this, I love you, big guy. I miss you so much. And I hope that you'll be home with us very, very soon. Now, Kareem Baker is scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow. You can count on NBC 25 for continuing coverage. I just wanted to stop. This Flint resident, Deontay, won't share his last name because he says he's too afraid. He wears a shirt in honor of 27-year-old Deshante Washington, killed in a shooting at this home on Winthrop Boulevard in Flint last week. Meantime, he's worried about Washington's cousin seen here in her Facebook picture. Someone driving by opened fire, critically injuring 20-year-old Denisha Lawson, Monday after her cousin's funeral, just before 8 p.m. at this home on Odette. I just heard a whole bunch of gunshots ring up, and I ran in the house, and then when I came back outside, she was laying on the ground. The violence started last Sunday when police say someone drove by this home and opened fire, killing Ashante Washington. Next thing police knew, they were investigating an arson at this very home. Police say family members of Ashante were having a candlelight vigil. You can still see these candles left on the ground, but that didn't stop gunmen from driving by, shooting this family in mourning. We just lost a family member, you know, we come to chill, party, you know, because he went to heaven today, and it's just, it's crazy how they just, just back to back, how it just happened. This friend of both victims is also afraid to share her last name. She and Deontay say the violence at the vigil hurt an innocent young woman. Yeah, just gave me a hug, told me she loved me before that happened. She's just a peacemaker, that's all. <laughs> People out here just killing just for fun. How can you kill somebody for fun?